the theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior. So here's just a brief depiction of the theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior. And we'll discuss a little bit more later on the differences between the two, but what you'll notice here from this graph is that the blue boxes represent the theory of reasoned action. The green boxes added to the blue boxes are the theory of planned behavior. And uh, throughout this discussion, I'll mostly refer to it as the theory of planned behavior. And what you notice from this logic model here is that behavior, of course, is the thing we're interested in. Behaviors are things such as uh, getting screened for tuberculosis or getting a, a mammography or exercising or eating a healthy diet. And what the theory of planned behavior, and by implication as well, the theory of reasoned action, suggest is that behavioral intentions are the primary and major predictor of behavior. So if we can get people to a point where they intend to get a mammography or engage in physical activity, then we are uh, th th then we have a high deal of confidence that we are able to uh, to actually get them to to behave. Now, the model or the theory here uh, really depicts and lays out those things that contribute to intentions. So, for example, attitudes toward the behavior, subjective norms, perceived behavioral control. Each of those major three constructs in the uh, in in the the middle column is comprised of smaller constructs: behavioral beliefs, evaluation of behavioral outcomes, normative beliefs, motivation to comply, control beliefs, and perceived power. Much of what we'll talk about today. Uh, are, are, are these constructs, how we measure them, how we change them. And, um, and I'll also give you some background or some history related to the theory of planned behavior. So what I wanted to start with here is a, a, an application example. So how would anybody ever use the theory of reasoned action or the theory of planned behavior? Well, let me give you an example. Surveillance data show that young, acculturated Hispanic women are more likely to get pap tests than those who are older and less acculturated. A health department decides to implement a cervical cancer screening program targeting older Hispanic women. In planning the campaign, practitioners want to conduct a survey to learn what beliefs, attitudes, and intentions in this population are associated with seeking a pap test. They design the survey to gauge when the women received their last pap test, how likely they are to seek a pap test, that's the intention, attitudes about getting a pap test, whether or not most people who are important to me, or in this case to them, would want them to get a pap test, and whether or not getting a pap test is something that is under their control. Now, that's uh, so kind of broad... Um, application of how the theory of planned behavior might be used. Let's talk specifically about some of the constructs. Um, and, and what I am briefly going to show you here is uh, an, another application, and I'll refer to this a little bit later, and you read this article in preparation for this, uh, for this lecture. And this is the social media um, utilization among health educators um, paper or study that, that you read that we conducted here in the department. And uh, what we showed here um, are things that are, such as behavioral beliefs, normative beliefs, and control beliefs. Now, these each fit into the different categories of, uh, of constructs that we'll show in the theory of planned behavior. So as you read that article, you should be paying attention to uh, how each of those uh, items that we dis that that we measured in that study fit into the different categories of constructs. And let me go back real quick, and I'll I'll describe each of these in greater detail: um, attitudes, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control. I just wanted to go back one more time to this to the uh, to the logic model here so that you can see 
uh, and get a sense for how these constructs work um, to predict behavioral intentions. So the theory of reason to action was first introduced by a guy named Martin Fishbean. Um, and he was trying to uh, better understand the relationship between attitudes and behavior. And uh, attitudes are defined more technically in the theory of reason to action or theory of planned behavior, uh, meaning that we're not using just a kind of a layman's definition of an attitude. Uh, for example, he has a bad attitude or she has a bad attitude. Um, but defined more technically when we formulate attitudes about specific behaviors. Uh, later on, he teamed up with a guy named Isaac Asgen of the University of Massachusetts, and they introduced in the 1970s um, a book related to the theory of reasoned action. Um, and then in the 1990s, there was an extension of the theory of reasoned action uh, to the theory of planned behavior. Now, what happened was in the theory of reasoned action, you may recall from the original graph, it does not include perceived behavioral control. So the, the primary construct, of course, was intentions, which were, which were uh, influenced by attitudes and subjective norms or, so, or, or sub normative beliefs. Now, they realized fairly quickly that while people generally behave as they intend to, sometimes they do not. Think about some of the reasons why you don't behave when you intend to. So, for example, did you intend to exercise this morning? Did you? If not, why not? Was it because you overslept? Was it because somebody called you late at night last night before you uh, were able to fall asleep? Or somebody called and woke you up? And so you were tired this morning and you overslept. Now, moving beyond just you, think about um, the example that I gave you originally about um, Hispanic women and uh, being screened for cervical cancer. They may have intentions to do so. They may know that it's an important thing to do. They may even have a family member who recommends it to them. Why might they not? Well, maybe they work a job that uh, doesn't allow time off to go get screened. Or maybe they live too far away from the clinic. So these are the types of things that, that Isaac Asgen and Martin Fishbein recognized as influencing, in, uh, influencing engaging in the behavior and so he, they added the, the, the theory, to the theory of reasoned action, they added perceived behavioral control, which resulted in the theory of planned behavior. And essentially the difference between the two is that theory of planned behavior includes perceived behavioral control, which represents in the environment. Now here are some basic assumptions of the theory of reasoned action. And, and this one's important, this first one. It assumes that people are rational and that reasoning is the primary determinant of behavioral intention. Now, what does this mean? It means that in order to apply the theory of planned behavior, we have to assume that people behave in rational ways, meaning that the theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior is not applicable for spontaneous behaviors, random behaviors. Uh, outbursts, for example, of, of anger or aggression. Um, we're talking about kind of premeditated, methodical, rational behaviors. Being screened for tuberculosis, being screened for breast cancer, um, eating a healthy diet, exercising, those sorts of things. It distinguishes between the attitude toward an object and an attitude toward the behavior. So, for example, if I were to ask you, do you like cancer? You would say no, most, most likely. You would say no. Uh, most people would say no. Most of us don't like cancer. And, that's, uh, uh, and this is an important distinction because just because we don't like cancer doesn't necessarily mean that we all get screened for uh, prostate cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer. We're actually talking about our attitude toward the behavior, so being screened, eating a healthy diet, 
exercise. Our attitude toward the behavior is very different from our attitude toward the object or the outcome. If, our, if, if it were completely dependent on the, object, on the attitude toward the outcome, well, then we would all engage in those behaviors, but we don't, which leads us to believe that it's really the attitude toward the behavior that leads to the outcome. That's important. It's important because we too often focus on the outcome in public health and say, well, um, uh, breast cancer, as opposed to focusing on a mammography. Okay, so now what I want to do is go through the constructs. And, and, and I've listed it here as construct zero as behavior. Uh, and, and, of course, behavior is the end result. This is the thing that we really care about, um, whether or not you're uh, eating a healthy diet, exercising, um, being screened for um, cervical cancer or prostate cancer. And what I've also given you here are examples of, of how these things are measured. So, uh, the next uh, construct, which really is the first construct, is behavioral intention. Now, behavioral intention is the uh, perceived likelihood of performing the behavior. Um, and we oftentimes measure, and, and I'll list in here numbers, um, as kind of a strategy that we oftentimes use when we're measuring uh, the constructs in the theory of planned behavior, and we'll use negative numbers and positive numbers. So um, positive numbers, and to the extent that they become even larger, absolute values, and they are positive, represent uh, greater um, likelihood or higher intention. Um, whereas negative numbers represent uh, very, very unlikely or, or um, I guess in this case it wouldn't even be just that there's no intention, but almost intention to the opposite. Um, and what I've got here as well are examples that are taken from an, an actual project that was done in Sub-Saharan Africa related to primary care physicians and, um, and, and, and regular visits and checkups um, for various um, outcomes. And so um, I'll, I'll share these examples with you. They were from a, a part of a, a project, again, that was sponsored by the World Health Organization. So I'll share these examples with you. But um, you'll have to do a lot of translating into perhaps examples that might be more relevant for your own work. Um, so this is uh, how behavioral intention was measured among physicians. Um, and, and this is very common to use these types of words. I expect, I want to, I intend to. Um, so I expect to refer patients with low, lower back pain for an x-ray. I want to refer patients with lower back pain for an x-ray. And I intend to refer patients with lower back pain for an, back pain for an x-ray. Now, uh, what you get here then is they're able to rate their, their intentions, one to seven. 